Over the past couple of weeks, I've had several of you guys ask for this, so today we're going to deliver the driver, the Marcus Ed Bladway. Let's get into this. Hey everybody and welcome back to Golf Test Tell Me, the channel where I use my game to help your game. Hopefully I'm going to do that today. This is week number four of the Marcus Edblad Golf Swing Review. I've had several of you ask about this particular video. I've been planning on making it for a while now. It is on the driver. Now I've had my own struggles with the driver, not only just with this swing review, but prior to this. And it's been a little bit of hit and miss for me. As Marcus says, the irons and the driver you have to make two totally different swings. There are others out there that would say differently, but I tend to stick with what Marcus says because I have found the same to be true for me. Today, I'm gonna to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're gonna go through this driver, and if it comes out to be complete crap, it's gonna be crap. But if it's great, it's great. But either way, I'm going to try and work my way through it systematically to produce some really good driver results by the end of this video. Let's get started. Indoor golf simulators are fantastic and they are revolutionizing golf and they're becoming more and more predominant in people's market. homes. If you're interested in adding one to your home, one of the biggest pitfalls for me was choosing the correct projector. I made some mistakes along the way, but you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. Go to the BenQ website. The link is in the description down below. I'm currently using the BenQ LW500 ST model which I chose specifically because it is affordable, but at the same time it is golf specific and it's a high performing product. You get up to 30,000 hours on this device in eco mode. It's LEDs, so there's no lamps to change out. The installation is very easy. If I can figure it out, you can certainly figure it out. I've got links in the description down below. BenQ will help you to choose the correct projector for not only your budget, but your space. Tell them Golf Test Dummy sent you. All right, in several of Marcus's videos, he's talked about with an iron, the difference between an iron and a driver is that when it's on the ground, and I've talked about this in previous videos, I've got some out there. I think one was called Universal Truths, and I made several videos on this. But anything that's sitting on the turf, you have to contact ball first and then ground later, meaning your low point has to be forward of the ball. And from what Marcus has said in several of his videos, you're pushing more down with the palm facing more down or forward at impact with an iron, whereas with a driver, he wants you to get a little bit more wristy with it and almost get to a palm up position at impact with the driver. Uh, just hitting some six irons to warm up here, and then we'll move on to driver. We're starting off with my TaylorMade M2, which was my driver for the longest time. I've got a stock ProForce V2 shaft in it in a stiff flex. I've seen in a video where Marcus commented that with his gamer, his gamer driver is actually a regular flex. So that's why I've got the other one over here, which has a much more flexible shaft in it. And we're going to try that. But first, the tailor made M2. Oh boy, here goes. Okay. So I know that he says he wants you to kind of think about getting palm up. I've talked about in my follow through, what I like to try and do is get to toe up. That's a big block. It's a, it's a fairly solid strike, but that is a big block off to the right. Let's see what kind of yardage we get on this first ball. We're looking at 236 and a half carry and 242 total. You're not gonna get much roll out of it because it's a block and it ends up in a bunker. All right, swing number two. <clears throat> Marcus has said that you, he doesn't want to get the golf ball too far forward and he doesn't want it to go past his lead hip socket. I've heard him mention that as well. I started off trying to play it more back, but I think I'm going to play it on that lead hip. I definitely want the attack angle to be up and when I get to the top, I'm trying to really release it more from the top and get, get the club coming down and releasing down the line sooner. Uh, I've heard him put an emphasis on that as well. So let's see. All right, there's another block, but it's not as bad. And it feels pretty solid. Pretty solid. This one's not going to turn out too bad. Uh, I've got 244 carry and 256 and a half total. If I could turn that over into a draw, 
I'm positive that I'll get more roll out of it and therefore I should get more total distance. One more with the TaylorMade M2 and then I'm going to switch over to the BombTech which has a little bit more of a whippier shaft. Let's see. All right, started down the middle, has a little draw, not as good a strike, but still pretty good. That's going to carry more, and it looks like the total distance is going to roll out to more. So 244 carry, nope, same as last time, 256 total distance. So pretty comparable to the second one. Let's move over to the Bomb Tech driver, get a little bit more whip in that shaft, and see if I get a little bit more out of it because of that. There's a lot of people that, uh, that bag on bomb tech clubs. Uh, I have a good friend that told me that this 2.0, and they just came out with the 4.0, but the 2.0 that says bomb tech on the bottom instead of grenade, he said that this was the best driver he ever had. Um, and he's had expensive drivers and big name drivers. Uh, I, I'm not sure about the irons. I'm not sure about the wedges. I don't know anything about that, but I've been messing with the driver and the three wood now that three wood I, I was never even a three wood guy but that three wood is awesome i am in love with that three wood and i know there's a stigma attached to the bomb tech brand that says that you know oh that's just cheap crap and i'm telling you i have not had that experience so far it's actually been some great clubs so let's see what this baby can do I'm not going to swing any harder. I'm going to set up the same way on the left hip. I'm going to think about trying to get it to the top and then come from the inside and release it, not holding on to it at all. Just release it all from the top and just let it go. Oh no, what? Hang on. Where'd it go? Okay, there you go. <laughs> all right, we got the draw flight. Just an easy swing. No, not trying to kill it. That's a great result. I mean, I'll take that uh, all day on course. That is a 241 carry, 259 total distance, which uh, I believe may be a slightly longer total distance than the last one. Let's try one more. My, my iPad's about to die. Let's try it again. Blocked a little bit, but it is drawing. I feel like I'm really trying to release it from the top and let it go uh that one's going to roll out a little past 250 so not quite as long as the second one we got to get we got to get one more all right again left hip trying to bottom the club out back here and hit the low spot trying to make sure that i'm coming from the inside make sure that i give it a release i'm almost trying to release it back here i feel um and just try to make good, solid center, center face contact and catch it on the upswing. Let's see. Not as good a contact at all. Might have hung onto that one a little bit longer and it's gonna come up shorter. I did get the draw. That was not my best swing. Inevitably, I'm gonna have questions from you guys about T height and also ball position. As I said, the ball position that I'm currently using is on my left hip socket. I think Marcus said in one of his videos that you don't want to really play it any more far forward than that because it makes it more difficult to come from the inside. You almost have to come over and across the top and around yourself to get over to a ball position that's more extreme. Rapid fire here before the iPad dies. I'm gonna go bomb tech and then I'll go back to TaylorMade and then I'll go bomb tech and back to TaylorMade. Gonna try and focus on making my low point back here. Ball on the left hip, release the club, catch it on the way up, toe up on the other side. Oh, no. Let's go. Come on. All right, strong draw. Fairly well struck. It's going to carry out. We'll see what we get. That's going out a little over 250 total. That draw helped because the carry was only 240. All right, now on to the TaylorMade M2. Again, trying to make my low point back here. Release the club, come up. Straight ball flight, tiny bit of a block. Not the greatest contact, but not awful either. It's okay. 
Look, it landed right beside another ball from previous. 251 total, 241 carry. I want to try and get one more with each. Come from the inside, release it, going up. Very straight ball, slight block. That is, ooh, ooh, yeah. Carrying out almost to 250, going out past 250. 245 carry, 257 total. One more, let's go. Struck, center of the face. Blocked it, but, oh my goodness, carrying out past 250. If that had been a draw, I got 253 carry, 264 total. If that had been a draw and gotten that roll, that would have probably been out in the 270 range, which for me is big. Well, the iPad finally died, so I guess that's the equivalent of the, uh, the blinking light at the Oscars trying to tell me to get the hell off stage. So I'm going to wrap it up with this. Uh, take my channel for what it is. My channel is my own personal experiments and exploration into some of the lesser known methods and approaches to golf out there from some of the instructors that may not have as big and prominent a voice as some of the more modern uh, conventional instructors that are out there. I feel like YouTube can sometimes be very unfair and it can leave some of these great instructors and quite frankly, great content creators uh, in the dark. And my job I feel is to try and shine a light onto those as much as possible and I hope that I'm accomplishing that. I think that what you see out here uh, from me is a slightly above average golfer's perspective which can be very helpful sometimes because I'm much closer to the level of golf uh, with the mass amount of golfers that are out there, the biggest majority of the golfers out there. I'm much more their equivalent than some of these high level players and instructors that are out there and I feel that maybe you could benefit from being able to see things from my angle and uh, maybe not make some of the same mistakes that I have and fall into some of the same traps. So with that, I'll say goodbye until the next video, and I will see you then.